Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Judicious Fire. I'm on the iOS server. I'm going to be doing my Guild Wars attacks today. I'm going to be doing a, a different team uh, than I usually run. I'm going to be using uh, my striker, Dove, but I'm going to be doing everything I possibly can to buff her. She's going to be my damage dealer. Really, everybody else is set up in such a way that they're just either trying to lay the groundwork for Dove or to support her through buffing of some kind. So our number one uh, attacker uh, up in front is going to be Dove Keeper. I run her with critical traits. Uh, I try to get her crit rate as high as possible. Uh, I am using the new Vigorous Fury. Uh, it is fantastic for boosting that crit rate. Uh, it is only activated when the hero is strong and healthy. No problem at all. Something like a stealth requires your hero to be weak and dying. Uh, I think that's uh, a bit adverse to how one should be playing this game. It's just my opinion. Uh, you try to make your heroes strong. Vigorous Fury makes them even stronger. So she's going to get a big, big crit rate boost. Uh, right now, she's coming in at a critical rate of... 1,288. That is before the 80% boost. Uh, crit rates in this game, uh, crit is going to represent the chance that a critical hit is going to occur. A critical hit is whatever the normal damage is plus some extra. Crit damage is going to increase the damage that is caused by the critical hit. I've always found that crit, the likelihood that the crit attack is going to happen, I find that to be the most important factor. Uh, does it matter if you're doing a lot of critical damage if you don't have critical hits? No, it wouldn't. It'd be a moot point. So I try to get uh, crit up as high as possible. It's going to represent uh, every hundred is going to represent one percent chance that the crit is going to take place. So if you have 500 crit, you have a 5% chance that a crit hit is going to happen on the next attack. Uh, at 1288, Dove Keeper would have nearly 13% opportunity for a crit strike uh, with every attack. And that is reliable. I found that right around 1,000, uh, the heroes end up... Uh, critting reliably. Uh, that is before the 80% boost is applied. Um, and she is going to be going with a brute force. Now, I could get her up another 30% crit by using sharpen, but I find that with vigorous fury, the brute force is going to up that crit damage while at the same time upping her base damage by 70%, which is very significant. Uh, equipment. I'm running her with an energy sap. Uh, I think that based on the fact she has a damage cap, a victory lunge is not going to reflect anything. She's not a healer, so the holy uh, conviction uh, is not necessarily going to give her a healing a boost of any kind, unless she's running a healing pet or a survival. I really just use her as a striker. And again, a little bit of mix of crit and dodge. Let her hit hard like a truck, but don't let the truck get hit. Uh, and I have her in Punching Box to give her a big attack bonus. She's the one I'm dropping on the board first. Punching Box will be relegated to her, at least for the first few seconds of battle. Uh, next, in terms of boosting ability, I'm probably going to go with Cupid. Uh, Cupid is going to give Dove Keeper a 72% damage increase. That's all I'm looking for from Cupid. Running Sacred Light to keep him alive. Uh, I'm running Eulophant to give him a little bit of extra dodge, a Survival to give him a healing ability, a little damage negation. You know, nothing you can do is going to help Cupid buff the, the team. Uh, so I ran through all of the enchantments, you know, over the time that enchantments have been available. Why not reflect a little damage? That's about the only thing that you can really do to help this guy. I find a forest ward to not activate enough, you know, etc. That's a different video. And I give him all dodge. Keep him alive. I'm just using him as a buffer. Uh, second in the buffing category, I'm definitely going to go with Walla Walla. Walla Walla is there simply to help. I'm not really interested in his healing or any of this other stuff. He's there to help 
my striker dove keeper hit harder. Uh, he is going to give an attack boost of 36%. And that's going to help a, a great deal in causing her uh, damage to go up, especially when she starts raining those crits down. I have him with Piblob to reduce the damage, uh, excuse me, to reduce the accuracy of the enemy. Survival paired up with that sacred light to keep Walla alive. Just want to do that. When I got a holy conviction, my number one first choice was right on Walla. Going to help to reduce his damage. That's wonderful. It's going to help him receive, not provide to others, but to receive uh, a double in his uh, ability to heal himself uh, or to be healed by a pet. So that's going to help to increase his uh, survivability. Uh, the question comes up uh, just real quick. Hey, I got a holy conviction, but my hero has sacred light. My hero has stone skin. My hero has uh, some kind of damage-reducing talent or configuration of some kind. Should I be using this Holy Conviction, which provides another 40% damage or damage uh, reduction? Should I be using a Stone Skin Insignia that re uh, produces more damage reduction? And the answer is yes. In Castle Clash, uh, you are not uh, limited by your ability to increase damage reduction it's not stacking uh stacking is i would say just adding uh, you have a 50 and you have a 50 now they equal 100 that's stacking but when it comes to damage reduction in castle clash we use a, a multiplicity scale uh, there's a equation that one goes through long story short just basic idea. Please don't quote me down to the one hundredth of a decimal. Uh, what we're looking at right here is Walla with a damage reduction of 60% from the Sacred Light. Okay, Walla gets hit for 100. 60 of that 100 is already taken away by the Sacred Light. Of the remaining 40 damage that Walla is taking from that 100 hit, now 40% of that 40 is being reduced as well. So it would be a 16. Uh, leaving us in the end with Walla being hit for only 24 damage out of the initial 100 damage. So wonderful thing to pair or to... Uh, Synergize, I guess would be the best word, to synergize damage reduction in this game. It is not stacking. Uh, and we're going to move on. Uh, buffer, buffer. Uh, let's go with, let's go to Tree. Uh, he is, and he's going to be pretty essential. I tried Mike a little earlier in a test run or two. I tried even PD to try to buff my uh, Dove. But they, they don't survive running head to head with Lavas and Lazas and all this stuff. I need a tree antar for my fighting style. I'm not interested in revive or any of this hocus pocus. I'm interested in this. Let seven friendly heroes take 60% less damage. This is why we're able to park ourselves right up against the game's finest heroes and not get killed. Uh, that's necessary for this battle strategy to even get out the door, let alone down the road. Uh, Sacred Light, keep him alive. Survival to give him the heals. I have a malaise to cause the enemy uh, an inability to heal themselves. Very helpful. Very, very helpful on somebody like a, a lava or a dove that's got some kind of a healing capability. You stop them from healing. Mostly dodge. Okay, I'm not willing to spend you know, 1950 gems to reroll that last attack on, on Triantar. It's ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to go next uh, with Anubis. Anubis used in a support role. I'm just looking for him to clear out all of the troops, get the nice clean work surface. And then in addition, I am looking for him to reduce the attack ability of the enemy by 47%. So now all of a sudden those big bad boy heroes are doing basically half the uh, damage against you. That's wonderful. Uh, we've got ourselves a Persolot to lower their energy regeneration rate. Uh, Victory Lunge is great for getting uh, Nubba's uh, attack up. Give him a little reflect. And I run him all attack. 
for a variety of reasons, but I, I like a high attack rate on my, uh, high attack uh, ability on my uh, Anubis. And uh, lastly, I'm going to be using Ripper. And I'm using Ripper because um, I like the silencing effect that he's going to have against the enemy, uh, preventing them from using their skill. I like the anti-heal that he puts out. And he's going to basically be shutting down the majority of the bad guy's ability to heal. That's very important. So let my dove do her thing alongside those great buffers. Uh, mini Angie and Sacred Light to keep him alive. Survival to give him a heal. Love victory lunge on him, sure. Mostly dodge. Keep him out of trouble. Okay, let's get in there. Let's see what we got. We are looking for the highest mites. 650, 641. 750, 700. And our last highest so far is 641. Six forty one one fifty two. Four forty three would be highest. Okay, we could take two from there. Three, four from so four in total. A six sixty. A six sixty. Okay. Let's do this. Let's take this 650 first. Okay, no base damage. Zero interest in that. I am looking only for hero damage. I want to kill. I'll, I'll go right up against Dove. Uh, I want to uh, kill off the heroes long before. And I uh, fixed my uh, my drop order in the, the order that I prefer in this attack. Uh, I want to kill off the heroes long before there's any significant base damage. Watch the heroes. Watch them disappear. We are using Dove. This is why you don't use Dove Keeper in a defensive capability. We're using her as a brick wall to generate crit hits and to snipe, if you will, the heroes out from a distance. We have only this uh, Anubis. There's zero chance that Anubis is going to do anybody any harm. Nothing against Anubis, but he has sadly been kind of relegated into a support role these days. He is not uh, what I would call a, a major damage dealer. It's one of the reasons I have a high attack on uh, Anubis, is to get his attack up there. Okay, 650 is where we were. Let's move on next to 660, then 72. 700 and 750. Very good. Okay, make sure my math was right. Now on to 660. We got a whole bunch of breakthrough 30s. It's no problem. We got another Dove Keeper. Wonderful. Let's go uh, up against Dove. Straight on till dawn. Let's get that Dove. I don't want my heroes to separate. I'm going to start again. My heroes were separating. I was worried that one group is going to go down... Uh, the path of smashing up uh, buildings. I'll, I'll just, yeah, shoot, I'll just drop them all right here at the entrance. I'll say, what the heck? I will be engaging multiple heroes simultaneously, but let's just take a look at these heroes. Uh, these are Breakthrough 30 heroes. Let's watch them disappear. We have only one life on Anubis and a Dove Keeper remaining. We have 0% base damage. This is beautiful. That is a work of art. We're moving up on Dove Keeper. The moment her damage cap drops, she will be immediately taken out. We have Malaise cast on her in addition. That's trouble. Okay, Dove is gone. We are now just clearing the base. 
Uh, so this has always been my Guild Wars strategy. I talked about this at length in a, in a prior Guild Wars video. And I think it was the last Guild Wars video I recorded. Uh, just a, a, a strategy that uh, provides no risk. Well, at the same time, in and it's just my opinion as a player based on my play style. That's it. No right or wrong. I think it is uh, running head-to-head -head hero versus hero is really the ultimate test in this game. Okay, so 672. Uh, we've got a um, a Cosmo. Let's trigger the Cosmo, and then we'll just drop everybody else. Bingo. I'm going to see how I do against this first Cosmo proc. Oh, Cosmo's gone. Gone. Okay, no problem. Cosmo came back. But the 60% damage reduction that Triantar gives us. My heroes don't die. I don't use Triantar as a reviver. The 60% damage reduction that he is giving us. We can stand in the center of a Cosmo proc. And it's just like a sunny day. We can take a, a Dove Keeper crit hits atop our head. We say we just scratch our head and say, "What's what was that? What was that?" So it has nothing to do with the players or the heroes that I'm fighting. It has to do with reading the skill level, uh, the skill uh, description of heroes, and trying to use them together as a team in the best way possible. Uh, we're down at two. 700 and 750. Okay, we got ourselves. Anybody we have to be concerned with, really? Eh, not really. Uh, that's the usual fare in Castle Clash. You're going to see the same heroes on pretty much every base. And we'll drop in over here. That's fine with me. See how we do. We're just watching the heroes. It was a whole base full of heroes a second ago, and not anymore. And now it's just Dovekeeper. The one with the longest activating damage cap. And it's usually that way. Damage cap will go down in the next few seconds, and when it does, we run over her and move on. So we're getting big strikes, the kind of strikes that take out even these uh, Breakthrough 30 heroes. You know, 1.3 million uh, health. Takes only one of those big crit hits. And the hero's out. Okay, last but not least, let's do this 750. Let's activate. Uh, there we go. Boom, 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 boom. Right in there. And get take uh, Cosmo out as quickly as we can. We see how that first wave does. Yeah, we lost a tree. And we lost Cupid in that giant bubble. And there's a reason why I don't have a revitalize on my Triantar. I can certainly do that, but it does take Triantar a couple of seconds. I'll just restart. It does take Triantar a couple of seconds before he activates his skill and gives us that big 70% uh, or 60% damage reduction. I just find that in lengthier battles, which is what I typically tend to have happen, uh, I find that lengthier battles, uh, a survival insignia, does a better job at keeping our friend alive. Just need to be able to take out that cause. Without too much trouble. I'm going to experiment with something. I can do this two, three times, and uh, eventually I'm going to come up okay. But I, I'm just going to experiment with something, just kind of show you. I'll take the survival off. I'll show you what his damage reduction does when apl applied immediately. Go into that uh, screen again. 750. And now an immediate damage reduction from Triantar. And 
and it looks like all the heroes are gone. With the exception of a lava down at the bottom, no problem. We might even take out lava before we get close to him. Could be the case, who knows. Sad to say it, but uh, I find, you know, lava to be a, a tough one sometimes to keep alive uh, in today's game. I, I don't find his survivability to be survivability to be quite as good as Dovekeeper. His big hits start coming down. He was able to catch a heal. But I do have Ripper in there, and that is going to cut down on his ability to heal, uh, not providing him that window of opportunity. Okay, we're good. Did we do our five? Yes, we did. Broke the 13,000 mark. Uh, total points, 13,487. Great. I uh, want to thank all the guilds uh, involved here on the iOS server. It's always a great day uh, in Guild Wars Day. I personally would have uh, changed Guild Wars. I've talked about this many times. Uh, I would change it around so it wasn't guild versus guild, but so we could work co cooperatively with one another. But uh, nobody ever listens to me in this game. Okay, so uh, it was great uh, clashing alongside of you. I'll check you out on the next video, and uh, you have a good one. All right, bye-bye.